hi there. Oh. Good morning. Today, 22nd of September. Hey, forgot to brush my hair good today, huh? Calling Jesus. Are you calling Jesus? I love that song. As you can probably tell, I play it every morning. Well, today is the, what did I say? 22nd. 22nd of September. <coughs> My name is Missionary Norman Edgar, broadcasting here in Missouri. And that's at, uh, well, let me, let me show you up here. Maybe you guys don't see it all the time, but that's godspokesman.com, all right? 22nd September, I'm broadcasting from our home here in Missouri. And Missouri is in the center of the U.S. for you that don't know where we be, all right? So, that'll freak you out if you're learning English as a second language. My wife sometimes says Ewan's <laughs> from her uh, southern Missouri accent. The local colloquialisms down there. Ewan's, Goins. <laughs> I tell you what, I help people with English language as a Protestant Christian missionary for 43 years, and we got one messed up language. All these little quaint sayings that we picked up from all these other languages, now put them into English, you know. What's it mean the cow jumped over the moon? I don't understand. <laughs> Just anything and everything. All right. Here's our stats, 30,153 on Periscope, hearts on Periscope, <clears throat> 260,017, YouTube at 63,266, that's about two days ago. Today is Friday, Friday morning here about 9 o'clock, all right? And uh, yesterday, if you listened to me yesterday... You know, I, I got a little uh, worked up, all right? A little worked up. So today I decided to chill out, all right? I'm going to be cool today. Now I'm not, I'm not going to get so emotional like I did yesterday. So with a very calm, collective, peaceful voice I'll say that you that listen to my voice the great majority of you are going straight to the burning lake of fire hell now how's that is that calm cool collective you're going to hell for eternal torment because you refuse to obey Jesus' truths in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. Alright? Now, aren't you proud that I'm not screaming at you? I think I'm pretty calm today when I tell you you're going straight to hell because you refuse to ask Jesus into your life and heart. You are going straight to hell. So I thought I would start today in a calm, cool, collected voice. Yesterday I, I shared and got a little bit excited yesterday. But today I'm going to be calm and cool. 71 year old baby boomer, I'm going to be cool like the millennials. I'm going to be mellow and in a mellow voice tell you going straight to that lake of fire and brimstone eternal torment a place 
this is an interesting fact. As you know, 43 years as a Protestant Christian missionary, five tours in Asia, seven years in New Mexico. I have been asked so many different questions through the years I can't even remember about spirituality. All right. And one thing that I did research a lot about, as I I try to do about everything regarding the, the word of the Lord. And that was about hell. All right. You know, for the great majority of people out there, they don't believe it. All right. They don't believe Jesus is real either. All right. Billions, not a little couple of thousand, billions of people today, they don't believe in Jesus. Roman Catholics don't believe Jesus is the way of salvation. The nation of Israel doesn't believe that. Islamists don't believe it. Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, Baptists, and Lutherans, they don't believe that Jesus is the way. These Baptists, <laughs> they believe that God selected them before they were born. They're called to God. They're going to heaven. They're the predestined group, the elect. They are evil. Islam, evil. Roman Catholicism, evil. Protestant Christians, evil. They don't believe what Jesus says. They believe what their denomination says. Really evil people. All right. So. Oh, by the way, I want to tell you again something that uh, this morning... Selma, my wife, she's 70, I'm 71. We're reading the Bible. All right. I was laid out on the bed and she was sitting in the chair and we were reading in James. And it just validated what I was ranting about yesterday on Periscope. All right. But one thing that, uh, and so I said to her this morning, I said, I ought to talk about this on my scope, right? But one thing I've learned, and I believe it's, and I don't know why, but I try to keep my, uh, my presentation here spontaneous. People that can view me when I'm live can ask me and make statements, and people do, let me tell you, okay? A lot of times they're not nice statements what they write. It's their animosity and hatred towards God. And, uh, and the Roman Catholics are the worst. Islamists, hateful people. Baptists, hateful, hateful people. You just can't, you, they are so brainwashed. They're, they're like the Moonies were. Uh, you guys probably don't know who the Moonies were. There's another false cult group. These guys were walking zombies, all right? That's what Baptists are. This one say predestination group, they are wackos, all right? I, I don't know how to put any, Billy Franklin Graham, the leaders of this wacky, goofy stuff. It, they're as bad as this Osteen guy. Worse. Evil people. These guys, Osteen and the Grams are evil. They don't follow what Jesus says. Just read. Read their doctrine. Read their books that they're pushing out there on a dollar bookshelf at the, all the discount stores. That's where all that garbage ends up. After they skim off their millions. So anyway, I was going to say, before I started, I try to keep this spontaneous. And when I say spontaneous, I apply that to myself. I sit down here at this broadcast time, and I try, believe it or not, to not have a programmed uh, message for you. I mean, sometimes I get something I know I'm supposed to share, but a lot of times I, I like to stay blank. 
and a lot of people say, Norman, you are Blake. I mean, that you don't have much to say when you do say so. And for them, that I I believe that a lot of people that don't believe in Christ, they don't hear what I got to say. So I don't I don't have a problem with it. You can just click off. All right, it's pretty simple. All right. So today I'm sitting here before you. I don't ha I do have some thoughts about what I'd like to say. But I'm going to wait until this scope unfolds a little bit because I really don't know which direction I'm going to be headed in. A lot of you people that watch uh, this, and we've had a lot of people watch, we're at 30,153 views on Periscope, and we're at 260,017 hearts. All right? A lot of people... Uh, when you go into a church service, there's a three-point sermon. And it's got to be done in 47 and a half minutes. <laughs> okay? It's just a routine with these church people. Because they don't want to interrupt your day because you're going to go do whatever you do after church. And so, so it's, just, it's just a sham thing. All right? Let me tell you something, when God, when God has something to say, and if you've ever been around in Pentecostal circles, Trinity Pentecostal people, and I've been around them enough to, I know what's going on, uh, they have an expression called the anointing, okay? That, that means when a preacher man's up or, and the anointing, they'll say, the, the anointing falls on the preacher. That's kind of an expression. And what that means is that the people that are in the audience, the congregation as they say, they sense the Holy Spirit speaking to the group. Not so much the man that's up there, but the Holy Ghost speaking, Holy Spirit of God speaking through that man. And there's a certain anointing. And that anointing crosses all the prevalent thoughts of the congregation. And it's like a, like a giant, <laughs> just kind of a simple analogy. It's like a giant symbol. Boom. And everybody is raised up a level in understanding that this is God talking now. Right? And if that anointing's not there, then you're hearing this man, and you, as you know, you can listen to a lot of great speakers, all right? which I don't claim to be at all. all right? You can tell that listen to me, I'm this old country guy. They'll speak. Everybody will listen. Everything is good. And they'll bring out psychology. And they'll tell you the inner workings of your own mind in a church service. And you'll sit there on your level and say, Wow, I didn't know that about people. And he's really talking about you. And they'll interwine in a church service human psychology with things about God. Are you a prophet? Who is this? Miguel. That and much more, Miguel. I hope you're not a oneness person. I kind of think you might be a oneness. A Jesus only. Miguel. Isn't that, isn't that strange that I would say that about you? I wonder if that would be so, Miguel. So anyway, talking about... <laughs> Coming to today's scope today. I come here unprepared this morning, and I try to do that because I know that each time I come on here, God has directed me to come on Periscope. Again, we're at 30,000 views on Periscope, 260 million, I'm sorry, 260,017 hearts on Periscope. On YouTube, we're at 63,266 views as of two days ago. 
When the anointing comes forth, as they say in the Trinity Charismatic Pentecostal Circus, they say that that you experience the word of the Lord in your life. And so, when the anointing's not there, you're listening to this fellow, who you really don't know, give his opinion, and if he's a great speaker, you'll be enthralled by what he's saying. Because it's new knowledge, a different way to look at a coin, to flip it over and over. But, you are a God spokesman, doesn't it mean that you are a prophet? Yes. And more. Okay. Uh, maybe you didn't hear me. I said yes to you. All right. Miguel. I think it's Miguel. I thought that was your name. Maybe I misread that. So the anointing that comes forth is the anointing is God wanting to speak to your heart. Today, this spontaneous little time I'm having right now, I refuse to talk about a lot of things I know about. 43 years as a Protestant Christian missionary, five tours in Asia and seven years in New Mexico. I've been up in the Golden Triangle area of the Himalayan Mountains, brought the word of the Lord to this animus village. I've been in the thralls of the drug cartels in Mexico, first foreigner ever going to the Reynosa prison down there. Only guy, only white guy, all right? Wait 18 months in that city of Reynosa before they'd give me approval to go in there. Had to get the drug cartel leader of Reynosa prison, 2,000 man prison, had to give the okay for me to come in there. Hi there. So today, my name is Missionary Norman Etker, O-E-T-K-E-R, let me get my sign up here, this is me, alright, see that, O-E-T-K-E-R, you can Google that name, take a screenshot, O-E-T-K-E-R, Norman. Don't forget to Norman, or you'll see my great, great uncle, Dr. Utker Baking Products. He's in Germany. He's my great, great uncle, believe it or not. All right, <clears throat> Dr. Utker, that's right, Dr. Utker. All right, <clears throat> so today, as a Protestant Christian missionary, I like to keep my scope spontaneous, open. So I've decided again today to not have, I have a lot of stuff here that I could talk about. And I could make, I could tell you stories that would raise a hair on the back of your neck. And it's true events in 43 years as a missionary. He has great recipes on cookies. Rascon, that's right, DC Montreal join. Today, if you listen to my scope yesterday, I got excited, and it got into a rant. Today, I'm going to be calm and cool and collective. All right? You, that are listening to this scope right now, are going straight to hell because of your refusal to obey the truths of Jesus in the Protestant Christian Bible as you read them. You that are listening to this scope are in rebellion to God. You look like Stephen Hawkins. <laughs> Today is the day that you need to repent. So the question is, as I sit here in my home in St. Charles, Missouri, the center of the United States, 71-year-old Protestant Christian missionary, 43 years as a Protestant Christian missionary, what are you going to do today? 
Is this the day that you say to God you're sorry for your rebellious attitude towards Him? Or is this the day you slough it off again and play this fake Christian, fake religious ideas that's rolling around in your brain? Do you continue your foolishness thinking that everything's going to be okay? You're a fake. I know it. God knows it. And you know it. So what's the point of it? Why do you keep faking? It's, it, I tell you, it's the... Uh, today, when you go into uh, a Protestant Christian church setting, whether it be charismatic or the mainline denominations the the Christian the people that actually think they are a Christian are the worst hypocrites and the thing about it what's your job sir and I like that sir hey that's good I like that sir <laughs> That's before you lower the axe over a chicken's head and you cut it off. <laughs> I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. And if you don't know what that is, Google it. All right. <laughs> Today is the day of salvation. You want to become a Protestant Christian? You want to be a follower of Jesus? It sounds good. Okay, great. There's three things that you have to do to be spiritually born again, to become a Christian, to become a new creature in Christ. Three things. Number one, you will say to the Lord that you're sorry for your rebellious attitude towards Him. Two, you'll want Jesus as your Lord and Savior of your life. Three, You'll repent, turn to the truths of Jesus in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament. You'll read, you'll understand, and you will obey. You don't do those three, you're going to the lake of fire. Eternal torment. Not to the streets of gold. Jasper walls, this place called heaven where there's no sickness, sorrow, or pain. I began earlier today on this broadcast, again, we're at, uh, on Periscope, we're at 30,153 30, views by people like you, 260,000 hearts, and 63,000 on YouTube, views on YouTube of these Periscopes, all right? I was uh, mentioned hell earlier, and there's an aspect of hell I want to tell you about that most people are never heard, clueless about it. All right. When you go to he when you, you now you don't know this, you d you that are listening to me, you don't know this, but now in your life. <coughs> Christian or non-Christian, you can be an atheist. You can be a scoundrel, all right? It makes no difference. But in your life today, you have hope. Okay? You can be suicidal. And you'll have the hope that, well, I'll kill myself and everything will be done. I won't have to worry anymore. <laughs> okay? That's your hope. Well, I know things will get better in a couple of days. That's your hope, okay? What are you thinking about Muslims, sir? They're Muslims, Judaism, Roman Catholics, Hindu, Buddhists, Mormons, Baptists are all religions. All religions are evil and meaningless. Islam, meaningless. Roman Catholic, meaningless. Judaism, meaningless. Okay? 
Protestant denominations, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, meaningless. Religions, meaningless. For you to become spiritually born again, a follower of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, three things you have to do. Number one, you will have a private conversation with God. You will say you're sorry for your rebellious attitude towards God. Two, you will embrace Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Which one is meaningful for you? None. Zero. They're evil. Two, you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And three, you will read the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus. You'll read, you'll understand, you'll obey. You don't obey, you don't believe, you don't confess your fault to God and accept Christ, you're going to the lake of fire. That means Roman Catholic, Islam, Baptist, Method, they're evil. Religions, all religions, total, every religion is meaningless evilness. Nothing. They're good for nothing. Got that? Evil. Boy, oh man, I, I'd go on about that. but So, I'm talking about hell. And here's an aspect of hell a lot of people don't know about. You have hope. You that are on Periscope and you that are going to listen to it, you're talking like my dead grandpa. All religions are evil. You are evil. You're in sin. Your life is in sin. More than likely, your grandpa was evil. He wasn't spiritually born again. Your mother, your brothers and sisters, your wife, your friends are evil because they're in original sin. Yes, you are evil. You were born in sin. Sin is a proclivity that you desire. How, you ask? How, rascal? Rascal, do you know right from wrong? Maybe yes or no. Do you know right from wrong? No. <laughs> I'm not wasting my time, all right? Okay, you're, you're trying to pull my chain. So look here. Rasco, I got your buddy here. Here's your buddy. This is called the Dodo Bird. Rasco, you're the Dodo. Dodo! Do you know right from wrong? Look at that. Dodo says yes. He knows, but you don't. So you are the Dodo. And, hold on. This is Dodo's cousin. On the ninth... <laughs> this is Dodo's cousin. But he's about on the ninth side of Dodo. All right. Dodo's cousin, do you know right from wrong? Look at that. He, yes, he knows, but you don't. So you're worse than Dodo's cousin on the ninth side. <laughs> Go away, rascal. I don't want to talk to you. All right. All right. So, hell, you have no hope. Now, listen to this. Imagine yourself in a room. And it's pitch black. You can't see your hand in front of your face. Now just imagine, you can actually do this. You want to put a blindfold on and, and go in the room and shut the door. All right? As you're sitting in that darkness, I want you to just, just think about what you're thinking about. 
So you're sitting in that darkness and you'll start thinking all kinds of things about whatever your subconscious brings up. But you will have the hope that you're going to take the blindfold off, see around the room, and go out of the room. That's your hope. A person that goes to prison for one year, 10 years, 30 years, has the hope of eventually getting out of that prison. A person that's in a marriage and it's not good has the hope that it'll get better. Or have the hope he's going to get out of it. Or she's going to get out of it. Children grow up. Children have the hope of getting away from mom and dad someday. <laughs> Mostly to go have sex. That's a sad truth, isn't it? That's really sad. But we have this hope, sinner or saint, you have this hope that things will change. How many times in the United States of America you can hear people say, try, try, try again, you'll succeed if you just do the American dream, work hard, persevere, go, 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 and you'll succeed. Keep your mind focused on your dream and you can make it. I have a dream that Martin Luther King guy said just a joke. It's a false hope because it's your hope. All right? Now get this. In hell, it's eternal blackness. There's no light. Are you still here, Grandpa? Yes. You're still going to hell, too. So don't, don't think I forgot about you. In hell, there's darkness. In hell, there's eternal burning fire that you're exposed to, your physical body. You don't burn up. There is no annihilation in hell. This continual burning pain in your body. But get this. The part of hell that I realized a couple of years back is that there is no hope. Oh, maybe it'll stop one day. Oh, maybe. Oh, I think about my life on earth. Oh, I, oh, swimming in the cool water. You have no hopes in hell. Do you understand? Hope is a driving force keeping you alive. When you lose all hope, you kill yourself. Do you understand? <laughs> That's right. You are a propitiator of it. You are a disciple of hell. You're evil. You're in sin. That's right. You're living in hell. Absolutely, you're absolutely correct. Totally correct. And the devil's leading your life. All right? Now, if I, if you were a sensible person, you'd say to me, Norman, remember, there's Batman, Superman, and then there's Norman, the superhero. Don't you forget. All right? <laughs> I love saying that, and you guys freak out. In hell, there's no hope. And Norman. There you go. Good. Superman, Batman, Norman. With his woman, Selma. All right, good. Is that good or what? Huh? You like it, huh? You're going to hell. No hope. All right. So I say to you, Three things, and it can change your life completely. Do you believe me? Three things you can do to change your life completely? To get out of the hell you're living in right now in your life? In your city, in the town you're in? The old hateful stuff around your life? 
If I told you you could get totally away from it, be free of it, would you listen? Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe not. Because sin is evil, sin is stupid. All right. <laughs> That's you, stupid. I know you're not supposed to name call people, so I won't tell you you're stupid. But now here's what we'll do. Hold on, Dodo. Are these people stupid that don't want to believe in Jesus? Look at that. Dodo knows that. Look, guys. Dodo, what do you think of our friends here this morning? Oh, there, there's no hell. The other side is only peace. Eternal peace. Count them, Grandpa. Oh, Dodo says you belong to him. Dodo, they're your cousins? Yeah. Take a look. This is your cousin. He's been away a long time. You want to see him? Look at him, man. He's kind of looks like you got a yellow peak. Huh? Beak, I mean. Look at them eyes, man. Look, look at them eyes. Hold still, Dodo. Take a look at them eyes. Them is Dodo eyes. All right? Now, we're going to have a conversation one day about how you are a Dodo. That's you. Today, number one, you need to say to the Lord, you're sorry for your rebellious attitude. Number two, you need to embrace Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And three, you got issues, Grandpa. That's right. And I'm on my meds too, man. Mm. You're going to say to God, you're sorry for your rebellious attitude. Number two, you're going to embrace Jesus as your Savior. And three... You're going to read the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, and obey. That's how you get out of your living hell you're in now. You're hell bound, going to hell. Everyone that listens to me on Periscope, you millennials are hell bound. You know why? Because your Generation X parents are hell bound too. They don't believe in God. What about... Elu, sir. What about? I don't know what Elu is. I like that, sir. That's good. I'm glad you remember that, sir. All right. In hell, there's no hope. There's no hope that, well, it's going to get better. Somebody's going to pray me through. Oh, I remember my mom, my dad. There. There's only one Lord, which is Jesus Christo. Miguel. Miguel Jr. There's only one Lord. Jesus Christo. I don't know what you're up to, Miguel, but... So, Miguel is... Okay, Miguel, I don't know if you got strength enough of character to answer truthfully. Is Jesus your Lord and Savior? That's a yes or no. Why yes? You can just put why for yes. <laughs> Is he your Lord and Savior, Miguel? Come on. Come on. Why for yes? There is no hell. We make a hell through our own action. Okay, Miguel, I agree with you. You're in hell. Yes. Miguel. <laughs> Okay, Miguel, you say there's no hell, right? Right? You say there's no So you must belong to the seven-day Adventist church. Is that right, Miguel? You think you're a Christian, right? You belong to seven-day Adventist church? The only and unique. Yeah, that's what I <laughs> The only. <laughs> Hold on, Miguel. You little hypocrite liar, I'm going to show you something. Now, nah, I said it. You the hypocrite. Hold on, Miguel. Hold on. I got to get something here. You'll like this, Miguel, if you can hang in there. Hold on. Hold on, Miguel. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to jerk you around there. All right, Miguel. I want to read you something. 
Just show you how you are just so full of it, all right? And you can believe them SDA people. <laughs> You're a sucker. You're what you call I'm Macomb. Macomb. All right, well, you're a sucker, but it's okay. God loves suckers, too. All right, listen. And the devil that, this, this is from the Protestant Christian Bible. Listen up. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Jesus talking. Jesus talking. Revelations 20. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And this is you, buddy. Listen. Verse 15. And whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You guys are so deceived. You're just like Roman Catholics, Islam. SDA, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness are all the same. You got it, Miguel. You don't believe the Bible. I feel sorry for you, Miguel. You've been duped, all right? But you're gullible, so they took advantage. You, you are exactly what this guy represents. Dodo. You're a dodo, Miguel, for believing that junk. Hello, Daddy-O. Hey, Brazil. Or oh, no, Robert Bazinski. Hi, Robert. You loving Jesus today, Robert? Or are you like this old Miguel here, an unbeliever? Miguel is a first-class sinner. Lost in sin. All right. Today's a day of salvation. All right. Number one, to become a Christian. All right. Well, Miguel, I don't want to read what you write. Miguel, you just want to go away. All right. You are evil, Miguel. You are against Jesus. You are against the Protestant Bible. You're against everything good and holy. You belong to a false cult, Miguel. You are evil personified. The doctrines of God, the gospel message of salvation is through Jesus Christ. We, the followers, those that are spiritually born again, are to follow the great commission called the gospel message as given by Jesus Christ. You, Miguel, refuse to believe the words of Jesus, and you follow some lunatic religion called Seven-Day Adventist. Who is the man behind you? Uh, what do you mean, who is the man behind me? I don't understand your question. I like to answer that. So, who? What do you mean? Who's the man behind me? Who am I following? Is that what you're kind of? Are you asking that question? Who's Who's the man behind you? I guess that's what you got to mean. So today. When I got on, today's the 22nd, all right? On Periscope, we have 30,153 views. On Periscope, hearts, we have 260,017 hearts. On YouTube, we're at 63,000. There is another man in your room. 
Rassman. Uh, no, there's nobody here, buddy. All right, you see that? You stay behind you. There's nobody there. Nobody, nothing, nobody. There's your dodos. <laughs> nah, there's nobody here, buddy. Just me in the room. All right. All right, that's it. Just me. All right, so you got it. All right. Today, when I started, I wanted to be spontaneous. Yesterday, I talked about, I uh, went into a rant yesterday, pretty much. You need to look at yesterday's video on Periscope. It's on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Norman Etker, that's me. Google my name. You'll see we're everywhere. Godspokesman.com is the internet radio station that we run 24 hours, 7 days a week. Go there right now on the internet. It's right above my head. Godspokesman.com. You want to hear the truth? Go there. You'll hear it. We can broadcast live on that station also. If you were a follower of Jesus, you could broadcast live there too. I purpose today to not begin this session with a particular message. I want this uh, time to be spontaneous. I want it to be calm and cool today. So, in the most calmly, coolest fashion, <laughs> I can't even talk. The most calm and cool method that I can come up with, I'm going to say, you are going to the lake of fire, hell. Why? Because you, the obstinate, bullheaded, rebellious re rebel, refuse to yield your life to God. Okay? Now, isn't that calm? I'm calm about it. You're going to burn, baby, but I'm going to stay calm about it. All right? You millennials have no idea what's going on. You are the clueless bunch. You think religion is going to a building with some kind of cross on the top. You think religion is listening and following someone. If you agree with what they say, you will follow them. If they will respect you, embrace you, and give you a sense of being loved, you'll follow them. You are groupies. You will run to any group that will show affection for you. It can be Islam, Buddhist, Hindu, Roman Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, Amish, Mennonite, Atheist, Agnostics. It doesn't make any difference. You all out there that listen to me, are sinful, evil people. Now, you think that sinful, evil people are people that are child murderers, pedophiles, animal killers, or whatever. You think that's what's evil. What you don't realize that sin that you're in in your life is evil. Your proclivity to live the life the way that you want to is sin anti-God. What you don't realize is that in your life, you're headed to that lake of fire, that place called hell. So you can join, just like we had a guy on here earlier, a religion that says, hey, 
Just like the Jehovah Witnesses say the same thing. There's no hell. Seven day Adventists, there's no hell. So don't worry about it. You're in hell right now. Go ahead. <laughs> it's just evil. Evil. So if you want to be spiritually born again, what is it that you have to do? So very calmly, coolly, I'll say to you how to become spiritually born again and be a Christian today on Periscope. No ranting, raving, telling you you're a sinner going to hell. I'm going to be calm today. I'm going to be cool today. First, three things you're going to have to do. Number one, you're going to say to God, you and God alone somewhere, sometime, you're sorry for your rebellious attitude towards Him. Number two, you're going to embrace Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Three, you're going to read the New Testament words of Jesus and obey them. You will. Not what I say. Not what some preacher guy tells you in them buildings with a cross on the top. You're going to read the words. And either you're going to do it or you don't. If you don't, you're going to the fire. You're going to burn, baby, in hell. You don't have a choice here. You don't say, well, I'll pick and choose what I think is good for me today, what Jesus said. Either you love Jesus with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength and your neighbor, or you don't. That's what Jesus said. You're ashamed of Jesus. He said he's going to be ashamed of you. If you think you're going to get a pass because you go to church or something or pay your tithes or whatever junk you're doing, go in your bingo times. You can forget that praying five times a day. Reading that Bible, going on your mission trips, don't mean nothing. You can give everything you want to everybody. And be in that burning lake of fire that Jesus talks about. Why? Because you don't want to believe that the streets of gold and jasper walls with no sickness, toil, danger, pain, suffering is real. You'd rather believe the lying, filthy devil. And you realize, oh, just I'm trying to be calm here and cool today. I don't want to. I don't want to start ranting and raving at you guys. That you are so ignoramuses that you're going to the lake of fire and you just don't have sense enough to see that. But I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you act like a dodo bird. I'm not going to say things like that. I'm going. To, I'm going to remain calm and cool. So. My little audiences will follow me. If I say something, they hurt. No, you hear what he said? He hurt my feelings. <laughs> Bunch of wusses out there. Hey, look, read the Bible. Get it. Get it up. Read that Bible. Open that book up. See what Jesus said. I guarantee you start reading the words of Jesus. You're going to love the guy. You're going to find there's no fault in Jesus. You hear me? There's no fault. You're not going to find these faults in Jesus like you see in your own life and anybody else's that say they're a Christian. You're not following me. You're not following some goofy church doctrine out there. Them buildings with the cross on them. You're following the words of Jesus. So read the words of Jesus. You want to become a Christian today, there's going to be three things you're going to do. There ain't no shortcut. There ain't no other way around this. You can listen to anybody you want. You want to follow that hypocrite old steam, the swaggers, the charismatic, the non-denominational independent churches, the Baptists, the Med. You want to follow all them, you're going to go straight to the lake of fire. Why? Because you're not doing these three things. Listen closely. To become a Christian, you have to, number one, have a conversation with God where you, you and God alone, not three people, you and God, you're going to say to this God who you can't see by His help and grace, grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor, that's going to help you to say these words to God. You're sorry for your rebellion.
rebellious attitude towards him. And that's all it's going to take. And then secondly, you're going to say, I want Jesus in my life as my Savior and Master. Number three, you're going to repent. Repent means turn to the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament truths of Jesus. You will read them. You will obey. If you do not do these three things, you're going to hell. That's how it started out when you first came on this broadcast. If this broadcast ends and you haven't done those three things, you're going straight to hell. This afternoon, you're still going to go to hell. Tonight, eating your supper, just realize that lake of fire is burning and you're headed straight to there. Tomorrow morning, you're going to wake up, try to forget about what you heard on this Periscope broadcast, but I guarantee you, you're headed straight to hell tomorrow morning. You're going to be going to work. Your little nine-to-five job, whatever it is, you might be a little housewife doing your little old thing, going straight to the hell. You might be this Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, getting up in the morning, singing to God, singing to Jesus, thinking you're going to heaven, but going straight to hell. You know why? You know why, you Christian, so-called Christian, you know why you're going to hell? This third thing, read the words of Jesus and obey. Bingo. You selectively, you Christian hypocrites, you selectively pick out what you like about Jesus and his doctrine, and that's what you water down to put into your little church group. Little groupies. You pick and choose. You bring a variant strand of the gospel to your little groupie people and think you're going to heaven. Why do Jews control the media? Hey, Bean, I don't know about that, but Bean, you're going to hell. Know what do you think about that? Bean? Hello, Bean. You're going to hell. That's what this, this is about. Bean, you're on the media now. Right now, you're in cyberland. You're in control of your life right now on this thing. You're in control of the cyber broadcast you're doing right now, Bean. You're evil, Bean. You're going to hell, Bean. You know it, I know it, and I can help you stop from going to hell. But do you want to listen to me, Bean? Do you want to do the three things I said, Bean? Number one, say to God you're sorry for your rebellious attitude. Number two, that you embrace Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Number three, you obey the Protestant Christian Bible truths of Jesus as you read it. Do you want to do that? Your answer more than likely will be no. Because you're a sinful, rebellious person against God. Like all rest of the millennials that tune in here on Periscope. There's billions, B, B boy, billions of people reject Jesus. Totally. The Jews reject Jesus? You think the Jews are following Jesus? You think the nation of Israel, you think Islam is following Jesus? You think Roman Catholicism following Jesus? Do you think the Protestants are following the biblical truths of Jesus? They are so far out in the left field, they write any theological doctrine they want put it on paper, put it in a book, and say, this is our tradition. They are evil. All religions of the world are absolutely, totally evil. Now, I'm going to remain calm and cool today. I'm not going to get off like I did yesterday, ranting and raving. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be cool today. Be calm, collective, cool. Watch this. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. I'm so relaxed today. I'm not going to tell you. You're going to that lake of fire and burning. I'm not going to say that today. Right? I'm going to say it calmly. You're going to hell. Do you want to go to hell? 
You're going straight to hell because of your rebellious attitude. Well, is that calm? Am I being calm when I say that? that sounds good? Let me try that again. Oh, you millennials, you Gen X's, and you baby boomers like myself, you're going to the lake of fire and burn, baby, burn, because of your rebellious attitude. Is that is that calm? Am I calm? Am I cool? Dodo, am I calm and cool, Dodo? Look at that. Dodo says I'm calm and cool today. I'm not ranting and raving at you. You're going to hell. I'm not saying that. I'm calm, right? Look at this. This guy is on my side. That's Dodo. And listen, listen, I got Dodo's cousin. This is Dodo's cousin. Here he is. See him? All right, Dodo, this is a ninth cousin of Dodo. Here's Dodo. Look, you kind of look alike. This guy is really sick, isn't he? Twisted. <laughs> He's the ninth cousin that he can't figure out on whose side yet. All right. <laughs> what do you think? Is Norman, am I cool today? Look at that. He's saying, yes, He's. I'm cool today. All right. You guys are going to hell. Isn't that something? You just go, I got a smile on my face. I say, you're going to hell. It's a, my voice is saying you're going to hell. Your voice can stop you from going to this physical place of fire and brimstone and suffering. Your voice. Isn't it something, this gospel message, you ever think about this? God, who created everything that is, it makes no difference. He's a spiritual substance that we call God. He created everything. Billions and billions of years ago, who cares? He did it. He created it all. God, the spiritual substance, has no beginning, has no end. He's ever now. All right? Do you think you can understand that? No, you can't. But he said to humans who he created with, from dirt of the ground, he said that in the future, in Genesis 3.15, that someone was going to come and crush the fire of evil in your life today, 2017. How did this spiritual substance cause God, how did he choose to bring that deliverance of your to your life, did he, is, is God going to bring a Savior, a person to, to uh, crush evil, to come against communism, come against democracies that are not for God? Is God going to someone, send someone to destroy sin and evil, homosexuality, transgenders, alcoholism? The abortionist people that kill 58 million babies in the United States. Are, is God going to send somebody to just destroy them evil? All the criminals and gangs. God's going to destroy, send someone, going to put the hammer on them. Is God going to do that? You know what God said? I'm going to take these half ignorant people, these 12 people, and by the words that come out of their mouth, you're going to get eternal salvation. That's the gospel message. And I'm one of them low-life guys that's telling you, you need Jesus in your life. There's three things you're going to do. Here, regardless of the timetable, you're going to do them. You're going to do this here on this earth are before Jesus because your knee will bend. That's a little promise in the New Testament. You didn't know that, did you? Before you slip off into that lake of burning fire and brimstone, that place called hell, instead of walking into the streets of gold and those jasper walls with no suffering, pain, or sorrow, your knee will bow. To become a Christian, three things. Number one, you and you alone out there, not with me holding your hand, oh, you little baby. No. 
It's not going to be you, some wimp toast, wishy washer preacher man saying, Oh, everybody, bow your head and close your eyes if you want to. Oh, turn the lights down a little bit in the church. Turn the lights down and get, put on a little soft music in the background. With nobody looking around, if you want to bow your head, close your eyes, everyone. Nobody looking around. Now, not to your left, not to your right. Eyes closed. Now, if you want Jesus as your Savior, just slip your hand up just a little bit. Just a little bit. No one looking around. I've heard that, folks. It's the honest truth. I'm not exaggerating one bit. They'll tell you you're a Christian. You slip that hand up. You just lost your job. You want a job, so you're going for Jesus now. Your wife just left you, so you're going for Jesus now in your life. Your son's hooked up on them drugs. Now you for Jesus now, man. I need Jesus because I can't handle what I'm going through. You're a dopehead. Oh, I need Jesus now in my life to get me free of this dope. I need Jesus because I need a good job, man. I need that Jesus in my life. I need to be a better laborer, electrician. I need to be a better and stronger nuclear physicist. My psychiatry practice is, I need to be better. I need that Jesus to help me. <laughs> You can't become a Christian on a rebound. Oh, my, my wife left me. <laughs> I lost my job. I had an earthquake. <laughs> I have no house left. I want Jesus. My grandmother died. I need Jesus. My wife died of cancer. I need Jesus. Meaningless, folks. It doesn't work that way. You got them scammers out there called Protestant Christian religions that'll suck you in in a heartbeat and you follow what they think is right. You'll be part of their little groupie and they'll love you. Of course, they want some money for it, too. You want to become a Christian? There's only one way. I'll say it again. Three things. Number one, you and you alone are going to have a private one-on-one -on -one conversation with God. That conversation will be enabled by God's grace. Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor to all people. You will say to God that you are sorry. For your rebellious attitude towards the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of the Protestant Christian Bible. Number two, you'll embrace Jesus as your Savior, Master, and Lord. Number three, you'll read the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament, words of Jesus, and obey. You don't do those three things, you'll go straight to the lake of fire. I want to know about Christianity. Philip. What you need to know, Philip, you are a sinful, evil person right now, Philip. That's what you need to realize. You don't need to know about something else. You are evil, Philip. Evil, sinful, rebellious individual with the proclivity to sin 24-7. That's you, Philip and every other human on this planet that's not been spiritually born again. The Protestant Christian churches are like you, Philip, evil. All religions are evil. All religious doctrines are evil. All man-made, traditional, Protestant, denominational truths are evil. Roman Catholicism, evil, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness, Islam, Buddhist, Hind, evil, evil, evil. So, Philip, you are in that group. You are evil because you're born, your spirit, 
is evil. It's in original sin state. God sent Jesus to set you free of the sin state you're in right now. You are evil. Right? You want to know about Christianity? You want to know about the light? You're in spiritual darkness. You're in a room. And all you see is evil. Evil has been with you that you are so commonplace that you think you got a right to believe any way you want. You think, Philip, you got a right to choose what to believe. Evil controls your life. Interesting. You thinking, huh? You're still with me. Evil is evil. Why is it so hard for the human to say to God, I'm sorry for my rebellious attitude, God. These deceiving demonic Roman Catholic Church and their devil doctrines of Roman Catholics, these are the great hoodoo people. They got a hoodoo religion. They try to make a man into a father God figure that you have to confess to. Evil. And there's millions of people that fall for these devilish Roman Catholic doctrines. Millions of people fall for the false devilish Methodist doctrines. Millions of people fall for these false Southern Baptist doctrines of Billy Graham and Franklin Graham. You think I'm exaggerating, but... If I heard it, I wouldn't believe it either. If I heard somebody tell me Billy Graham's an evil, anti-Christ person, I wouldn't believe it either. I wouldn't, because why? Everybody knows he's a good old boy, bro. Go on YouTube right now. Billy Graham Exposed. You'll see a one-minute video on YouTube where Billy Graham says, all religions are going to heaven because they're called of God. Billy Graham says to Reverend Schuler in this one minute video on YouTube, you don't need to know Jesus to go to heaven. I am a Protestant Christian missionary. I've been one for 43 years. Folks, I have I've five tours in the Southeast Asia. I've heard that same garbage from American missionaries, European missionaries, Australian missionaries, that come into third world countries and tell the Buddhist monks, Hindu practitioners, animists, shamans, if you're a good person, want to do good things with your goofy, devilish religion, God's going to accept you. Because you're a good person. Evil. Evil. Evil people sending untold millions and thousands of people into hell because after they're indoctrinated, their the delusion is so set in their mind because they refuse to read the New Testament truths of Jesus and listen to some man and their goofy doctrine that it is the truth that that delusion God allows into their life, and they go straight to the lake of fire for their rebellion against God. 
Man is a hateful, vengeful, evil creature. Yet God sent Jesus to save each and every hateful, vengeful human being on this planet. You know what they did to Jesus? <laughs> you think they despise Jesus? Well, you embrace that Jesus today and they'll despise you. People don't worry about me so much anymore because I'm just an old guy. An old baby boomer. Don't have much to say except only about Jesus. Don't forget, folks, you're going to watch this video a little bit. You're going straight to hell if you don't do the three things I mentioned. Number one, say to God you're sorry for your rebellious attitude. Number two, embrace Jesus as your Savior, Lord, and Master. And three, read the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus and obey. You don't do that. You're going to that place of fire and brimstone called hell instead of to the streets of gold and jasper walls where no suffering, pain, or sorrow. You're going to hell. You that come on Periscope for your 10 or 15 seconds, you're going to hell because of your rejection of Jesus Christ. You have no idea what I'm talking about because you're only here for 15, 20 seconds, if that long. But that's how long it takes to become a Christian. Fifteen, five seconds, in a twinkling of an eye. The Holy Spirit of God, when you meet God's requirements, the three things I'm talking about, when you meet that, there is a physical, spiritual, emotional change that happens to your physical body. The Holy Spirit of God Got this? Now listen. This spiritual substance that we call God that's created all that there is to the millions of years that this earth has been around. For the billions and billions and quadrillion years that universe and galaxies have been around. There's only one constant. That God. This spiritual substance that we call God, who has no beginning, has no end, who is now. And the only way we find out about this spiritual substance named God is by the first religion that revealed it, the Jewish religion. Check it out, folks. You can check out all these other heathen paganistic religions. It's a joke. They're all a joke, a con job. They all start with Adam and Eve. This is Islam. <laughs> Islam is a, it's a joke, people. In 1600, this guy, you know why he made it? You know God, you guys don't even want to read history. Mohammed copied the Greek. Old Testament, added to it, took the writings of the known letters for 600 years from Jesus and the apostles and wrote the Koran. And why did he even do all that? Because Roman Catholicism was dominating North Africa. And the Catholics were saying, you convert or die. So Mohammed said, we're not doing that. We're going to start our own. The followers of Mohammed, what did they say? Convert or die, and they killed their millions. Roman Catholics killed their millions. Islam killed their millions. The Holy Wars came. Church of England killed their millions. Killing, 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 all in the name of God. The Roman Catholics between 16 and 1700 A.D., the wars between Roman Catholic and white Protestants, got that? White Protestants and Roman Catholics, 1600 A.D. to 1700 A.D., approximately 15 million, 15 
one five million people killed by both sides. White people, why? In the name of God, I'll kill you. They're evil. Evil. E Anybody that kills and destroys in the name of God is evil. If you think the United States of America has got a got some kind of carte blanche to blow other countries off the face of the earth, to just destroy millions of people, it's evil. Evil is evil. There's only one victory that's in Christ. The evangelical Christians of America today, right? They are the phoniest hypocrites on the planet. The evangelical Christians, let's just say in the United States, they are the sorriest devil following groups in the world. All Protestant denominations are evil intent. You know what makes it evil? They refuse to follow the doctrines of Jesus. They have set up their own traditional gospel message. They created from the writings of Jesus their own doctrines. They pick and choose what they'll believe and form a God through words so that their private little denomination can worship the image of a God they want. They are evil. All Protestant denominations are evil intent, folks. Don't ever think they've got your goodness in mind. You follow a Protestant Christian church, you're going to hell for sure. You know why? Because when it comes to doing what Jesus says, they'll sit in that church pew and play this I got you game over and over and over with their three-point hypocritical sermons and you follow right along. What's a three-point sermon you'll hear in all the so-called Christian churches? It always goes like this, folks. Listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. As a Protestant Christian missionary 43 years in this business, it's a con job. The Protestant Christian faith that you know, Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, it's a con job. Here's the way it works. The typical three-point sermon from these heretics, from these devil-led Osteen, Swagger, Charismatic, non-denominational, independent. You know what they say to you? Here's the way it goes. Three-point sermon. You ready for this? Number one, they'll read you, and they're great speakers. They're not like me, some half... <laughs> I'm not a good speaker, folks. I'm an uneducated fella. No, I don't have a whole lot going for me. Dodo, is that right? Is that right? I'm kind of, yay, Dodo says that. Let me tell you something. You go into a church house, what you're going to hear the three-point sermon. Number one, they'll be great speakers. <laughs> oh, man. You just read President Obama against uh, uh, President Trump. Duh, there's no comparison, right? <laughs> okay. Obama, President Obama is a great speaker. All right. So you'd sit there and listen to him. Ooh, wow. Okay. Listen to Trump. You're going, uh, okay. So you're in a church here they're getting up for his 47 and a half minute sermon because that's all it is. 47 and a half minutes. Three points. Number one, they'll tell you a biblical story from the Old Testament. Some grand, glorious thing. Whatever it might be. Elijah, Moses. Okay? Yeah. Grand story. And watch your little timer on there. Go click, 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 click. Boom. Part two. 
Part two will then talk about how the one individual in the story, and they'll all revolve around it, how this one individual got caught up and they went off a little sideways and and God restored them, you know, and great wealth came back to Israel and God blessed them and everything. Okay. And then a little timer goes off on the pulpit there. Click, point three, because see, 47 and a half minutes is coming up. Point three. It's all it's all the same, folks. It, I'm telling you, it's always the same. Point three comes up. You are a sinner and you are no good. You miss God. You could have been so much. God wants to bless you. You've had this poor life. You've had this downtrodden thing. You've tried and tried, and now God's going to bless you. God wants you to come forward. God wants you to turn back to Him. God wants to bless you like He did the nation of Israel. You are God's children. You can be blessed, and their wealth and fortune can all be yours if you just turn around and come back to God. That's what these false Protestant churches tell you. And what happens? The people. <laughs> Oh, I'm terrible. I'm no good. <laughs> and some churches have you come to the altar. <laughs> I'm terrible and cry the little eyes out. Forty-seven and a half minutes. Ding. Time to go home. Everybody outside the church. Come back the next week. It's a variation of the same thing again. Today, when you walk into a church house today, the predominant theme is you are a child of God and God should be blessing your life. People want to hear that. You won the lottery because you're a Christian. God's going to give you everything and bless you. You're going to have it. And these poor drug heads, people that are down and out, divorced, ain't got anything going for them, run to a church house thinking they're going to find something And when they get there, what did they hear? Today, people, people in the Protestant Christian churches worldwide are under this devilish illusion that they are children of God. There's this false lie that the nation of Israel is God's chosen people. That's a lie from the devil. You will see every so-called Protestant, Christian, missionary, pastor, evangelist, prophet, apostle, general overseer, whatever else they can pump up, they'll say, Israel is the child of God. God's chosen people. Don't believe it, folks. The Protestant, Christian, Bible, truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist, states unequivocally, there is no Jew or Gentile today in the New Covenant. They are equal, equal and in love. You go to these false, demonic, messianic, Jews for Jesus groups, these Jewish-led so-called Christian groups, you will find their arrogance and condescension towards non-Jewish people is appalling. You'd make you want to vomit in the place. That you got to have a Jew in charge you got to have a Jew by birth in charge of the service. Today, false Christianity, false Allah, false Buddhism, false Hinduism, false Protestant Christians are false, arrogant, devilish controlled. Why? Because they refuse to do three things. If you want to be a follower of Jesus today, three things. 
Number one, you're going to say to God, you and God alone, no third party, you're sorry for your rebellious attitude towards Him. Number two, you'll want Jesus as your Savior, Lord and Master. Number three, you're going to look and read the New Testament writings of Jesus. Understand what He's saying and obey. You don't do that, you'll go straight to that brimstone and fire that will include all so-called Islamists, Buddhists, Hindus, Protestants, Protestant Christians, baptized Christians. It doesn't make any difference. Those three things are going to happen for you to enter into the streets of gold and the jasper walls where there's no pain, suffering, or sorrow to be with Jesus at the right hand of the Father. You don't believe in asking for God for forgiveness of your rebellious, sinful attitude. You're not getting there. You can shut me off. You can click it off. But it don't make any difference. Every, for 20, 20 generations, the same thing I'm saying is the same thing that was said when Jesus walked this earth 20 centuries ago. Every generation will have the opportunity by God's grace, the gift of grace. Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor. That grace that comes in abundance to all human beings on this planet. That grace, power, strength, love, and favor to all people. The power of God is grace. The Bible says that wherever evil, evil, evil is, grace, God's power, much more abounds. There is no excuse for you not becoming a Christian. I don't care if you're in the heart of Burka land. That's how powerful the gospel is. But you won't hear that. You know that Pope of the Roman Catholic Church, he could be converted. But he's a devil-controlled person. You think he ain't read the words of Jesus? That murderous church he belongs to, the Roman Catholic, murderous, killingness, burn people on the stake, Pope after Pope, killing innocent men, women, and children in cities. Islam doing the same thing. Buddhists do the same thing. Hindus do the same. They're doing it today. Killing, murdering in the name of God. And you think, oh, well, we're all right. The Protestants in the United States of America pump up the military to blow everything off the face of the earth. And they all think they're self-righteous because we're on the moral high ground because those people are evil. We're not evil. Do you think that the presidents of the United States love Jesus? you think that President Bush, President Clinton, love Jesus? Do you think President Trump loves Jesus? Do you think Secretary of State uh, Clinton, she loves Jesus? you think her husband loves Jesus? Do you think these people that are in the White House right today, you think they love Jesus? You think Nancy Pelosi loves Jesus? You think McConnell loves Jesus? <laughs> these people are evil. You think people got this idea that the United States Declaration of Independence led to the Constitution was written uh, from Judeo-Christian values. They don't know what they're talking about. Do you think that Judeo-Christian values established this country? You're living in la-la land. You ever looked at the Declaration of Independence? Hold on. Hold on. Let me get it out for you. Hold it. I have it right here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Got it right here, folks. All right? Listen. Listen to this. You want to hear the truth. All right, you want to hear the truth? Listen. Right here. This is the Declaration of Independence. All right. Go on the Internet and copy it too. It's a whole thing right here. 
two and a half pages. Listen. July 4th, 1776. 1776. <coughs> the unanimous de declaration of the 13 United States of America. 1776. Keep that in mind. It's, I'm only going to read the first two sentences and you'll see my point. If you think that the Declaration of Independence was based on Judeo-Christian values, that means based on the Protestant Christian Old and New Testament values. I want you to listen to this. The United States of America is not based on that. Listen to what the Declaration of Independence actually says. You can download it. You don't have to believe it. I have it right here. I downloaded it. Okay? Right here. Listen. I'm only going to read the first two or three sentences. The unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another. And I listen to these words. And to assume among the powers of the earth. Think about that. What does that mean? Assume among the powers, plural, of the earth. What's the powers of the earth? I'm talking about nations, spiritual powers of the world, of the earth. What are they talking about? Listen, Jesus was taken to the temple high by Satan, the devil, and he said to Jesus in the Bible, the New Testament said, Jesus, I, he on the, up on the top of the temple, <clears throat> could see all the nations of the world. The devil showed Jesus that. The devil showed Jesus all the nations of the world that he controlled. The devil controls this world. Jesus told the high priest that his father, listen to this, the high priest is the ruler of Israel. Jesus said to the high priest, your father is the devil. The devil took Jesus on top of the temple and showed him the kingdoms of the world and the devil said, if you will worship me, Jesus, I will give you all these powers of the world. Jesus said, not so. <clears throat> Listen to the Declaration of Independence. The first sentence that was written in 1776 from these 13 colonies that wanted to rebel against England. The same 13 colonies a hundred years earlier were importing slaves, were importing human beings as some subhuman species to do all the filthy, lousy things that man didn't want to do. When you hear that we're based on Judeo-Christian values, you have to be an absolute brain-dead individual to believe such garbage. Read the Declaration of Independence. I'm going to continue reading. When in the course of human events, a first sentence, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the devil, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature, laws of nature, what's the laws of nature? Hurricane, cyclone, floods, destruction, laws of nature, summertime, what in the world are they talking about? You don't hear nothing about the Protestant Christian Bible and the Declaration of Independence. If you think these devilish writers were thinking about God and Jesus, 
You need a brain scan. The separate and equal station <coughs> to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them. Nature's God entitled people. Who's nature's God? A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. Listen, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and they're enslaving people. You get this? These hypocrite, devilish, evil people were killing murdering, enslaving, had total ownership of human beings, and listen to what they write on a piece of paper. They've been practicing this since the 1600s when they settled in, in uh, 13 colonies or 13 states. We hold this second paragraph. We hold these truths of the Declaration of Independence, 1776. Read it. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, except the black people, that they endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that are among these are life, but not the black people, liberty, but not the black people, and the pursuit of happiness, not the black people. This is the Declaration of Independence. If you are stupid enough, if you that listen to my voice of the 360 million people in this sorry, sinful place called the United States of America, if you think we're here because we're a Judeo-Christian country, you live in la-la land. The devil is so... he's. Jesus said the devil is the liar and the father of it. I want you to listen to something. How did the devil deceive Eve in the garden? You know what the devil said to Eve? You can read it. Book of Genesis, the Old Testament. The word that the devil said to Eve to deceive Eve was the same thing he's saying to you today. You that are going to watch this, you're led by evil. The devil is in your life. And you don't know it. You know what? Here's what the devil said to Eve. Did God say? Today. You're sitting there, you're going to watch this video. Let me tell you something. As of the 20th of September, a couple of days ago, we're at 30,153 views on Periscope. We're at 260,017 hearts on Periscope. On YouTube, we're at 63,266 views on our YouTube site. Godspokesman.com, internet radio, 24-7. People listen to this, and you know something? Most people end up being deceived by evil because the evil one, the devil, will come back. The spirit, the devil is a spirit, and you are a spirit being. He's going to tempt you by saying, Did God say? And you will doubt the truth of the gospel message. And you'll continue your evil life in rebellion to the truths of Jesus. Jesus said to love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength and your neighbor. You have the right one to your heart for the day when she is mother of mother of the world and 
I don't know what you're saying. I have no idea. You are one confused individual. I have no idea what that means. Roman Catholicism is evil, devilish. The Immaculate Conception, devilish, evil. Praying to dead people and relics, evil. Islam, Mohammed, evil, false doctrines. Hindu, Buddhism, Protestant Christian people that are baptized. What are your thoughts on homosexuality? That is Aaron Murphy. <laughs> Do you really want to know, Aaron? Let me know. Do you really want to know what my thoughts are about homosexuality? Do you want to know? Do you really want to know? It's time for you to do, 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 you little finger. Do you really want to know? Waiting. Waiting, waiting, do you really want to know, Aaron, what my thoughts are on homosexuality? Sure. Okay, Aaron, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, hold on. Because this determines if I like you or not. <laughs> no, no, what do you think? You like Aaron? Yeah, he likes you. Here's, here's your cousin, Aaron. Dodo. <laughs> and if you don't like Dodo, here's his ninth cousin. And we haven't figured out whose side he's on yet, but he's a cousin of Dodo. Homosexual, listen to this. <coughs> now listen to all of it. Whether you like me or not, Aaron, it's lagging. It's lagging. Sexual practices determine, describe an individual characteristics as a Protestant Christian Bible New Testament states. Now listen, I hope you can always do the rewind on this. Now listen, this is what I write. All right, and just listen. It's double space, so it's not much. Seeking out and practicing abnormal sexual relationships. Practice sexual acts on each other, women with women, women and men with men. Those who seek out and practice this abnormality suffer within themselves. Their practical lives increase in attaining more wickedness. These individuals seek out more sins to do. They become hoarders and their personal greed abounds. Hate grows increasingly within their lives. Jealousy is their common bedfellow as they are involved with others. Murder is acceptable within their lives, and that's self-murder too. Quarreling is their conversation. Deceiving others continually is normal practice. Men, mean and vindictive behavior towards others is the common thread uniting. Gossiping replaces normal conversations. Gaining your friendship only to deceive. They not only reject God, they hate God and God followers. Arrogance towards all others. Pride and boastful is their way of life. 
They invent new ways to commit acts of sin, sexually or otherwise. They're consumed with no respect for their parents or other senior elders. They refuse to understand the plain truths of any subjects. They say and promise with the full knowledge of not fulfilling. Within their private lives, there is no compassion or mercy. They fully understand the wrongs against society that they commit personally, morally, and ethically, and can be held accountable for their actions, private and publicly. They, the men and women, the practitioners of the above described actions, homosexuality, know full well the harm that they bring upon themselves and to others within society. However, they continue willfully, without any shame or regret, and further encourage others to do the same. Now, listen to this. And the men, this is out of Romans, this is what the Bible says now. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burn with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. And as a result of this sin, they suffer within themselves the penalty they deserve. Their lives become full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless, and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that they who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. My thoughts about homosexuality. You do not go to the lake of fire and brimstone eternal torment because you're homosexual. You go to hell and not to heaven because you reject Jesus Christ. Murderers aren't sent to hell for murdering. Pedophiles, baby killers, child molesters, killers, bank robbers, murderers, dictators, Adolf Hitler, they didn't go to hell because of what they did. They went to hell because they refused to believe Jesus. God sent Jesus to save the world. The world is sinful and evil. You that listen to me today here on Paris, you are sinful and evil. You're going to hell. Okay, listen. God's will is that you'll accept Christ. He sent Jesus to save you. You want to become a Christian? Three things you're going to do. First, you're going to have a private conversation by the help of God called grace. Grace is God's power, strength, love, and favor. You're through grace are going to have this conversation. It's going to help you to say to God, you're sorry for your rebellious attitude towards him. Number two, you're going to say to God, you want Jesus as your Savior, Lord, and Master. Number three, you are going to read the New Testament words of Jesus and obey. You. You're going to read it. 
Not me saying anything to you. Either you're going to do it. If you do, you'll be spiritually born again. If you don't, you're not. You're going to hell. If you say yay to all three and begin to do that, you know what happens? You become transformed, regenerated by the power of God. Now get this. When it happens by God's grace who enables it all to happen, you're justified through Christ alone. You know what happens? You're loved, that's number one, and forgiven. You have no idea what it's like. It happened to me when I was 28. I'm 71 now. I became a new creature in Christ just like that. It was like, in my life, it was like two people, one over there and one here. The old Norman, the new. My name's Norman. Just remember, there's Superman, superheroes, Superman, Batman, then there's Norman. Yeah. New creature in Christ. Been one for 43 years. Going to keep on rocking for Jesus. You can too. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Today's Thursday. Is today Thursday? No, today's Friday. Hey, I'll see you Monday. Remember, some of my wife's coming up uh, on no. Sunday at 11 o'clock. She's on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday at 11 o'clock. I spent a lot of time with you guys today. Remember, you're evil, hateful people out there. You're in sin. I don't care how nice you think you are. You're going to hell. You better repent. Three things. And you're going to have that conversation with God. You don't. You're going to burn in the fire. Get out of that goofy religious church you're in. These all Protestant churches you're going to on Sunday, Wednesday night, or whenever you go, get out of it. Get that Bible out and read that New Testament words of Jesus, the Protestant Christian Bible. If you don't do what he says, if you think it's off in the... you got people that actually compose their gospel message just deleting the entire books of the New Testament. No, oh, we don't have to think like that. We don't have to believe what the apostles say. We don't have to believe what Jesus says. Here's what we need to do today, 2017. You listen to these religious Protestant hypocrites, televangelists, all of them that sell their books and tapes. You're evil. They're all evil. They're after the money, folks. Wake up. Duh. I got to go. I love you. Selma loves you. You're going to hell. Don't go there. You can't handle it. Mm.